Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful week. Uh, I have some big lessons to share with you this week. You know, um, they say, you know, nothing can take an alcoholic out quicker than finance or romance. Well, romance is uh, okay because I'm married and I've got a wonderful husband. Uh, finance can be a little tricky at times. And, uh, you know, when I first got sober, I was single and I was a starving actress. I, I was only as good as my next paycheck for my next show. And you know, the joke in L.A. always was, oh, you're an actress? You're an actor? What what restaurant do you work at? Because <laughs> everybody had to have a alternate job to support their living until they hit it big. You know, and some, uh, some of my friends did hit it big. But I do remember, you know, uh, a friend of mine who hit it very big. She worked as a bartender, barely making ends meet. She had a, she couldn't even go to, when she got sick, she had to go to like the free hospital. And now she's like living, living a life of luxury, but uh, it certainly didn't come easy. And you, you kind of do these things because you love them and it's what your passion is. So being an entertainer is not always uh, the, the most uh, lucrative way to go. Starving artist is not a term that uh, earned its name by chance. <laughs> and so I have got a, a lot of coals in the fire here that I'm working on and, uh, but nothing's happening yet. My, thankfully my husband has a job that's sustaining our family, but I'd like to be able to contribute and I'd like to, I think, you know, I can, but it's a work in progress with everything. Um, so I'm kind of like, taking my time getting there. Um, but we are able to, you know, pay, pay for what we got to pay for. However, this last, I think it was Friday. Yeah, maybe it was Friday. Uh, I, I finally, we've had a lot of medical issues happen in our household, be it my son with what, what's going on that we don't know about. See, he's constantly having to go to Duke for these appointments and Duke ain't cheap. <laughs> Even with insurance. So that adds up. And then count on top of that, my husband had, you know, at, at age 60 plus, he starts falling apart at the seams with all kinds of stuff happening. And so ch chalk on top of that, all those medical bills and then the deductible hitting us at the stop. So medical bills were kind of piling, piling up. And I kind of just brushed them to the side, put them under the carpet, you know, yeah, out of sight, out of mind. I'll, I'll pay them when I can. No big whoop. And finally, it kind of came to a head where, you know, the collectors are starting to call the medical bill collectors and, you know, my husband's starting to ask questions. And finally, I just had to say, OK, we're we're we got a lot of big medical bills out there that need to be paid. And I had to bite the bullet and just pay them, just pay them. And it was, and to pay him, I had to dig into my already depleted savings account that's growing smaller and smaller and smaller by the day, thanks to inflation and all the other fun stuff that's happening right now. Anyway, long story short, the savings account has always kind of been my safety net. My, my, as long as I have money in my savings account, I feel okay. I feel safe. And as that was happening, as, you know, I had to pay these medical bills, I had to take a huge chunk out of our savings account to pay it. And it, it wiped out a lot of money. And I was filled with fear, filled with a sense of dread. Um, you know, my security, my financial security just ripped and I lost everything in, in my mind. It's just like, Ah, you know, I, I was on free fall. I was on a free fall. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, the, the thought of a drink felt really good. M the only last time I had thought about taking a drink in all these years was when Liam was going through what he was going through. But it wasn't an option. And I knew it wasn't an option for me that day as well. And I was like, you know, thank God I did I have the tools. I've invested the time in my recovery and my sobriety that I don't have to go down that route. You know, I've got to do what I know to do, what I tell what I tell my sponsees to do, frankly, in this sort of situation. 
And it basically is, you know, I have to do a 10th step on it. I have to take a look. I knew, I knew right at the heart of it, it's fear. And I know anytime I'm in fear, it's a matter of me not trusting God. And I can know it's me not trusting God, but I still got to, I still got to find out what, what got me from point A to not trusting God. So I have to say, okay, why am I in financial fear? What's causing the financial fear today? Well, I'm fearful that we're not going to have money to pay our mortgage. I always want to say the rent because I rented most of my life. You know, why do I have this fear? And just keep digging, 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 digging until I get to that place of why I'm not trusting God. And usually that's my aha moment of, hmm, you know, has God ever let me down financially? No. You know, there's been times when when my show was closing and I had no idea how I was going to, this is, this is literally when I was literally living paycheck to paycheck and my show was closing. I had no idea where my next job was coming from, how I was going to make money. I had no clue, but I just kept praying, trusting God, doing the footwork. And I, you know, I went to auditions and, and everything. And i like, all of a sudden I'm out on the road for Nickelodeon and I get a call saying, Hey, Tom Williams has specifically requested that you come in and do a warm up for the Rugrats, the show that overtook my new show. And uh, I was like, I mean, what are the chances of that? Like the head of the company requesting an actor to come in and, and do this. And so literally all I had to do is go in and, and warm up an audience for like five minutes and immediately it, suddenly it's a position. It's an open part of the show. And, and you know, it became my bread and butter for the next few years until I moved on to the next thing. But God's never let me down. You know, things like that always happen. And I know that. And I know that, you know, if I ask for help, help will come. And so I have to, you know, um, I have been praying for financial security lately. And and it occurred to me that it's coming. It's painful, but it's coming because, you know, even I don't have these medical bills hanging over my head anymore. And we and I can move forward that I need to move forward to gaining financial security. Um, you know, drinking's not an option for me today. And and thank God I put all the work in that I put the work in for my program, working with other people, uh, living the steps. Um, you know, trying to walk the walk and talk the talk that I that I put out there. And thank. God, thank God, that's my insurance policy today that I don't take that drink. It's just not an option because had I not done all that stuff, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened. Um, I did. I will tell you that I did. I did indulge myself in a box of milk duds <laughs> and it felt good. And I'm not going to lie. I'm OK that I had a box of milk duds to overcome my anxiety. <laughs> And I just stopped at, I didn't even eat the whole damn box of milk duds, but just, I just needed some form of comfort at that time. And, and it wasn't taking a drink and my life isn't unmanageable with, if I eat a box of milk duds. So, so that was fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. And, um, you know, today I'm okay. I, I don't have the fear. I know everything's going to be taken care of. Is it, you know, um, the acronym of fear, forgetting everything's all right. If I trust God, just keep doing the footwork. Things always happen. Not according to my plan, because uh, my plan would suck. Always my higher power's plan, and uh, we always land on our feet and even better. So I, I just have to trust that God's going to take care of everything as long as I do what's in front of me. Um, and then, you know, I will be okay. So are you going through any sort of fear today? Maybe finance or romance, you know? What would happen if you trusted God to take care of it? You know, ask yourself, go from point A, why do I have this fear to point B to finally you get there, whittle your way down. And I'll give you, give you the synopsis one way or another. It's going to eventually lead. However you get there, it will eventually lead to not trusting God today. And I'm going to end with, um, this saying that's in, um, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous on page 68. It's my favorite part of the book because it helps me overcome my fear. And that is um, perhaps there is a better way. We think so. For we are now on a different basis. 
the basis of trusting and relying upon God. We trust an infinite God rather than our finite selves. We are in the world to play the role he assigns, and just to the extent that we do as we think he would have us, and humbly rely upon him, does he enable us to match calamity with serenity. So I just have to humbly rely on my higher power today, and all's, all's well. God sees the big picture, I don't. And uh, same true for you. You know, humbly rely on your higher power to carry you through whatever you're going through. And just don't drink, don't, don't pick up. If you have to get a box of milk duds, so be it. <laughs> it's okay. As long as your life isn't unmanageable, you're fine. <laughs> just don't, don't pick up that uh, uh, drug-killing solution today because it doesn't work. The only solution that works is the higher power that's going to save my life today and can save yours as well. All right. That's my Monday message. I hope, I hope you get something from it. I hope if you're dealing with fear, you know, it's okay. You'll get through it. Trust God. God will carry you through. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, subscribe if you get a chance. Bye.